Hi, and thanks for joining me. I brought the boat round to the slipway yesterday evening in readiness for it to come out the water today because this week I'm going to be blacking the boat. Yes, I'm doing it myself on this occasion. <laughs> Am I looking forward to it? Well, who knows? <laughs> Let's see what happens. So first of all, the boat needs to be taken out of the water using the hydraulic trailer. I'm just being told I'll start painting the boat whilst it's on the trailer because of the extra height makes it so much easier to get underneath it's good to be able to get under the boat and check that the propeller and rudder are okay also to check the sacrificial anodes which I will talk about later on
Well, the job is underway. He started with the port side, he's worked his way along the side, and is now at the back of the boat. Well, as you can see, the washing down has been done. The boat is being left on the trailer effectively to drip dry. This will also enable me to do the underside at the back whilst it is up high, because once it's gone down to sort of ground level, I won't be able to get underneath there so easily. I'll have to crawl under. So I've got another plan in mind as well while the boat is out of the water. I'm going to put some tunnel stripes on the back. They are the red and white stripes you see on the back of boats. So in a minute I'm going to do some wire brushing with my uh, battery powered drill and I'll see how I get on. Well I'm ready to make a start. I'm going to use this to begin with and see how I get on. But everything is very firm, there aren't any loose bits. But this is where the uh, tunnel strokes will go. So I do need to make sure I've got a good surface. Well, I'm about to start the blacking. It is a very, very messy business. It's going to be virtually impossible for me to film as I go along. I'll do what I can. I wish I had my hard hat actually working under here. <laughs> but uh, I've left it in the van. There you go. It's coming on, albeit slowly. The 
Those of you that have watched my painting series will know that I have a knack of pouring out the right amount of paint to do the job. It's very seldom I need to top up and today is no exception. <laughs> I've done the whole of what I needed to do at the back here with one pour from the tin. And I was surprised when I opened the tin it was full right to the very, very top. I thought there would be an inch gap or something. So I was quite surprised at that. <laughs> anyway, I've got on well, so that's good. <sighs> ah. <laughs> I'll just check the time. It's two o'clock coming up. I haven't got a clue when I started. I'll work it out when I look at the time on the uh, initial pictures. <laughs> but um, I've done the back end now. This part at the back, which comes down to a point, comes down to a sort of V point, is called the swim. That much I know. But I'm not very good at nautical terms generally. That's why I tend not to use them. But I do know that this pointy bit at the back, underneath the transom, is called the swim. So I think I need a drink and something to eat. I've not had anything yet. Oh, I had a cup of coffee this morning. But uh, I've not eaten or anything. So I'm going to do that now. But I'm pleased with how I've got on. And the weather is far better than I expected. So there's a bonus as well.
I've actually forgotten to mask up and put my goggles and things on, so I better do that now, I think. <laughs> I'm suitably attired, I'll carry on. I'm just trying to scrape off some of the loose pieces. It's always very difficult to lift off paint that is flaking, but um, I'm doing the best I can. In simple terms, sacrificial anodes prevent galvanic corrosion where two or more different metals are in contact with each other and water. Here you see one is severely corroded whilst the other is still in usable condition. The anodes tend to be made of zinc. So how have I got on today? Well I'm pleased with what I've achieved but I'm not pleased with how I got there. <laughs> I think I need to explain why suddenly I'm blacking the boat. The boat was last blacked three years ago. They say to do it every two, three or four years so three years was up and I thought it would be a good time to do it. The reason I'm doing it now in April is that um, a friend of mine, another Mora, was hoping to get his done. And when he suggested it to me, I said, well, why don't we work together and help each other, sort of motivate each other to get the job done? Now, unfortunately, he was unable to get the time off work, having booked it in today for both boats to come out the water. That didn't happen, only mine came out at water. Time was short. I didn't have a lot of it to think about what I actually needed to do the job. One of the things I knew I needed was a foam roller. And I went to a specialist paint shop and they only had one foam roller and I bought it. <laughs> I didn't really take a lot of notice of it. It was marked as a foam roller and I bought it. That's the, the actual sleeve that I'm talking about. Well, I don't think it's the right sort of foam roller. I've been struggling with it. It's um, very thin. The foam around the outside is only a couple of millimetres thick. I think it must be intended for some other purpose. What I needed was a foam roller that would actually hold the bitumen, the blacking, and allow me to... Um, run up and down the sides and for it to leave the roller and go onto the boat. The one I'm using is pretty hopeless I have to say. I think I was actually getting on better with the 4 inch roller, that's 100 mil, rather than the 9 inch roller which is 225 mil. The 4 inch rollers have foam sleeves, they are holding the blacking and they're lasting a long while once you've got the blacking onto the sleeve it lasts a long while and you can go over these sort of parts here these rib sections whereas the nine inch roller that I've been using is just too stiff it can't go over these um, raised sections these sort of ribs that are along the side of the boat and that has made it very awkward and also because there is sort of pitting to the blacking from previously it's not covering it properly. It's been quite hard going, I have to say. 
So I'm pleased I've done this side and I've done the back. When I started this side I was actually hopeful that I might also get the other side done. But I'm in one heck of a mess outside the boat. I've got stuff everywhere. <laughs> Inside the boat there's stuff everywhere. And I think it is time to stop and reorganise myself. So I've done this side along here. And I've done a little bit round the other side just to use up the blacking that was in the tray. I thought it was wise to use that up. And I'll start again tomorrow. So it's a satisfying day's work I have to say. I am pleased with what I've done but I think it could have been a lot easier if I had the right equipment. And I don't think I have the right equipment. And I did buy that long arm to use the roller with, but I think it's actually too long. You can't get enough pressure on it. That's part of the problem. So I think tomorrow I might just use the four inch foam rollers. I've got plenty of sleeves and I'm sure I will get on quicker. Although you'd imagine the 9 inch roller, which is like this and not like that, <laughs> would be uh, better, I think the 4 inch roller is going to be the answer. Let's see what happens tomorrow. For the time being, I'm going to say bye for now and um, I'm going to rest my tired feet. I'm wearing my work boots, the steel capped ones, and my little toe on my left foot is being a bit pinched, I think, so I'll be glad to take these off. <laughs> I'll catch up with you, well, probably tomorrow now. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be talking to you again tonight. Thanks for watching so far. Bye for now.